Hey YouTube, this is Prince from DC Programmer. Welcome back to another video where we are going to code the stopwatch part of our timer project. Actually, I recorded this video earlier. I even edited it and I was to post it, but then I forgot that I haven't posted and I deleted everything. So now I have to record back everything so that I can post it on YouTube. Well, anyway, being said that I am here and you can see that the first visit was a timer which we have implemented very well and is working. On the stopwatch, I'm going to create another visit over here, replacing the text and I call this the stopwatch. Now pay attention, we do have an inbuilt stopwatch which should not match with the stopwatch visit that we're going to create. After done that, just above the override function, we need another visit which is stopwatch. And this being a visit type should return a visit which is going to be a container. Well, now the UI part is going to come which obviously is very simple. We have this complete container which I'm going to divide into two expanded widgets each with a flex of 6 and 4. The flex 6 will contain the text in bold letters stating the stopwatch and the flex 4 will have three buttons stop reset in a single row and start in another row. So without talking much just give me some time so that I can code the UI very soon because I don't think I need to show you how to use a column to expand it some buttons and all so let's just do that well as you can see I have my UI coded it just has this text in center and three buttons how the code looks is that my container has a column, this column with two expanded visits. The first one has a flex of six, which has a container and the child, which is a text is aligned at center and the text has its own property. That's some font size and a font weight. The next expanded with the flex of four returns a container. The container has a column with the main axis alignment of a space around and the first visit of my column is another row which has two buttons two raised button with a stop and reset and the another visit of my column is the start button now let's first deal with the active and inactive part now by default the stop and reset button don't mean anything so they are not going to be active the start button is going to be active and when you press on the start button as soon as you press on the start button, the stopwatch should start and the stop button should get active. The start should be disabled and the reset should stay disabled. Then when you press on the stop button, the stop should become disabled. The start should stay disabled and reset should be enabled. And then finally, when you press on the reset button, everything should go back to as usual. Well, for that, we are going to need some variables. So let's just use them. There are going to be three variables of Boolean type. And I'm saying start is pressed which is going to be true by default and I have two more which is going to be stop is pressed and reset is pressed make sure that they don't match the name of variables that we are using with the widget timer being coded that let's come back and let's first tackle the stop part here I have to say check if stop is pressed is true or not if it's true set it to null if it's false I'm going to call some function here again with the reset part I have to say check if reset is pressed is true or not if it's true set it to null which is by default or else I have to call some function well in the start part everything is going to be a little bit different I'm saying check if a start is pressed which is going to be true by default so call some function while in other cases it will be a null now obviously without coding three functions this ain't going to work so i have void start this stopwatch in the same way i have stop stopwatch and reset stopwatch well the names can be a bit long but trust me later when you look this code then you will feel that these names do help you to understand the code better. So reset, stop, watch. Forgive me if I made a mistake. Well, let's just use them over there. This is going to be a stop, stop, watch. 
yell no error reset stopwatch cool no error and here by default it's going to be start stopwatch no errors now see they both are disabled by default which is what we wanted moving forward to the text part although this text should not be displayed as it is here it should be a variable so i'm saying string stop time to display again a pretty big name but trust me it's worth it now i have to just copy it and don't worry this is the good thing about text editors they will keep auto suggesting just remember a part and the rest you will get by yourself now i need one more thing which is going to be a stopwatch so i'm saying a s watch is a stopwatch see it is a stopwatch a inbuilt stopwatch but all that i have to say that this is a variable so stop a variable s watch will access the stopwatch but there's a problem with this stopwatch although we have a stopwatch but this ain't of much use actually so we have to use certain other things to make sure that this keeps running for that we are going to need a timer so what's basically hap going to happen is that when you click on this start button let's first tackle this start part all i have to call is to set a state and then i'm saying enable the stop button for which all that i have to do is to call stop is pressed and make it false that's it now my stop button will be enabled but not that not just that after clicking on the start button after enabling this stop button one more thing that i have to do is to start the stopwatch so i'm saying s watch dot start cool but just starting the stopwatch won't do everything so what i have to do is to run a timer for that i'm going to code two different function first one is start timer now what this start timer does is that it starts a timer that's it it will ask a duration and a callback now i want to be uh, i want to have a constant duration so i'm saying final d or uh, let's say final dur is going to be a uh, constant c o n constant duration and the duration is going to be second which is 1 second so i can just use this d u r right here and that's done this callback is an, again going to be another function and the reason is that because i want this to keep running after every second so i'm saying this callback is going to be a function and i name it as keep running obviously i haven't coded that yet so void keep running and what we're going to do right here it's something that will clear your concept of a stopwatch all that i'm saying is that when somebody clicks on this start button start the stopwatch but the stopwatch won't do certain things on its own one of them is is one of them is to change this time every second so for that and for other options what we are going to do is we are going to call this start timer function and what this start timer function is going to do is that it will start a timer so after 1 second it will call this function which is keep running now all that i'm going to do is that in the keep running i'm going to check if the stopwatch is still started or not with the sentence still started or not what i mean is that when somebody will click on this stop button button we will call s watch dot stop so then the stopwatch will start so here all that i'm saying is that if the stopwatch which is right now in s watch is running like if this is true do something okay so if this is still running all that i have to do is a very simple task call this start timer that's it but not just that's it i have to again call the set state function and here i have to change this value only if i change it i'm going to get what i need so this string is going to be a giant value so that we can display this here and that's where the good part comes i can just use the s watch variable and get this elapsed in hours see in hours then i have to convert it to a string and here let me just show you a simple magic use this pad left function and it says it asks initially for a width 
I'm saying width is going to be 2. Now what this means is that if this string ain't of width 2 or if this string is less than the width 2 then add a 0 in its left. That's it. That I'm saying plus we have this colon. Now well, let me just quote it on another line so that's more clear. Plus. Now what do we want after our? Now getting hours is straightforward. I just want to keep increasing this. But next that we want is the SWAT dot elapsed dot in minutes, not seconds. Now in minutes, we will get a value. But this minute value is going to be more. I mean, just imagine when this timer keeps running, there will be a point when this value surpasses 60. So it will be 63 seconds at that time this will give me the value 63 itself which we obviously don't want to show over here right so all that i'm saying that whatever this value is if this value becomes more than 60 i want it to divide by 60 and get the remainder so i have to just surround this by this and before moving out i have to divide it by 60 or basically i'm saying i want to get the remainder when it's divided by 60 then I have to convert it to a string I have to use this pad left the width is going to be 2 again and the value that we're going to insert is again 0 plus colon come back we have another plus with this same thing but the only difference this time is that it's going to be in seconds so just add this colon and here instead of in minutes just let's get in seconds and now let's try to run the timer so i think we should be restarting the app once so make sure that everything is good and the problem right now is going to be that although when i click on start okay okay i have to wait till it restarts now when i click on the start obviously the stop is enabled the timer is running but yeah i just forgot to disable the stop button and even if you press on this stop nothing is going to happen so this timer is going to keep running so what we have to do is here first of all I have to disable this start is pressed to so let me just copy this paste it here make this false save it now in the stop stopwatch I'm again going to call the set state function in the stop stopwatch all that we have to do is to disable this stop button again which is making this true while keep this as it is but enable the reset button so i have to say reset is pressed make it false and now it is enabled but not just that but somebody says a stop a stopwatch i have to say s watch dot stop okay not start dot stop now see the cool thing as soon as i say s watch dot stop this function is going to be wrong okay and once this is wrong this ain't going to call this which means this ain't gonna be called again so this set state will set this time to that particular time when we stopped this and see the timer is running it's quite cool you see how did how it became one how it will become two how it will turn into hour two but i'm not going to keep running this for us because i don't know what's going to see that anyway here the start stopwatch does its job the stop stopwatch has also stopped the stopwatch but i'm not going to reset the time because after stopping you might want to look at the exact time like for how much this whatever thing that you want to see for a stop timer has persisted now in the reset stopwatch we again have something as such i just have to make everything back to normal but our stop button is already back to normal so all that i have to do is to call start is pressed make it true then I have to call reset is pressed and call it true. That's it. Now what happens is that when I say start is pressed, then it start is pressed to, is enabled and reset is pressed is disabled. And after that I have to say stopwatch dot reset. That's it. This will tackle everything. Now this reset function will make sure that this value that we are getting using the stopwatch elapsed in hours it's all set back to zero let's restart the application once again and i will show this fully functioning working stopwatch and timer app right in front of you coded completely in flutter and dart so let's go to stopwatch let's click on the start button see the magic start button is disabled stop is enabled reset is still disabled and our timer is running we'll click on stop 
you see the timer it stops at the place where it was stop is disabled start it is still disabled while the reset is now enabled click on reset everything should go back to ground zero i have missed this one point i have to actually reset this value too so let's just copy it mistake happens it's okay everybody does that no matter i mean yeah it's true that i, I am coding this thing for the third time yeah exact the same variable i'm exactly still mistake happens so let's just save it let's click on start again and now let's click on stop let's click on reset and everything goes back to ground zero so this was another amazing flutter tutorial for you from us and i hope you guys are liking it and if you do keep killing us on youtube i mean the word killing exactly means you should keep liking us and i'll catch up soon in the next video trying to do everything that i have said that i'm going to do this month and let's see if everything happens well